Om. Today we shall take up the next paragraph of the real nature of man. This is going to be about religion. Swami Vivekananda's take on what religion has to say when a man reaches the state of doubt, reaches the state of skepticism when he realizes that life is evanescent. The idea of happiness always eludes him and the idea of death always haunts him to ask this question, is this real? In the previous podcast, we discussed about nihilism and how nihilism as a way out of this predicament is not advisable because it robs you of uh, goodness, it robs you of happiness, it kind of puts you into a state of a darkness that can in a very strong way psychologically handicap us. Now he speaks of the other position, the position of religion. Let us see what he says about it. We know a lot about religion and we know that in the modern age the mythology that is wrapped around religion is much denied or discarded by the modern man. It is because of his rational thinking that makes it difficult for him to accept anything that is depicted as a story and that story has no historical or scientific value. Here, Swami Vivekananda says, Then, there is the other position, to seek for an explanation, to seek for the real, to discover in the midst of this eternally changing and evanescent world whatever is real. In this body which is an aggregate of molecules of matter, is there anything which is real? This has been the search throughout the history of the human mind. In the very oldest times, we often find glimpses of light coming into men's minds. We find the man, even then going a step beyond his body, finding something which is not this eternal body, although very much like it, much more complete, much more perfect, and which remains even when this body is dissolved. So here, now Swami Vivekananda says that one position is to doubt, that is the nihilism, and the other position is to seek an explanation, to find a, to find a way out through logic, reason, or through a sort of preaching that could throw light into the present state of um, doubt and the present state of skepticism. So he says that to seek an explanation for the real, to discover in the midst of this eternally changing and evanescent world, what is real is the other position. We are going to attempt at knowing it. And every man, every human being from time immemorial has made this attempt to search for what is real within him. He Now Vivekananda questions. In this body, which is an aggregate of molecules of matter, is there anything which is real? This has been the search throughout the history of human mind. Now he takes us to this question that, that this body, which is nothing but an aggregate of parts, aggregate of functions, aggregate of molecules, aggregate of energies of vital breath, in this we see that all parts are working independently, but there is a synchronous state of combination that w is what we call life. But out of this also, am I the aggregate of all of this or am I the part of everything that is there in my body? I don't agree with the fact that I am a part of, I am the breath or I am the lungs or I am the molecules. I feel I am whole. But I see that what I say I, when I say I'm whole, I feel that I'm the body, but this body is not me. So there is this confusion. I feel I'm whole, but what I say as whole, wholesome, is actually made of parts, is ac actually made of a combination of functions that make it look like it is an entity. Therefore, man has always, owing to this predicament, searched for the truth that is beyond this. And he says 
Vivekananda says, from the very oldest times, we find glimpse of light coming into men's mind. That men have found out something beyond this body, something that is eternally more sustainable than this present body. And he says that th this one step is finding something which is which is not this external body, although very much like it much more complete, much more perfect, which remains even when this body is dissolved. Here Swami Vivekananda is saying that there were glimpses. They found that they did have a subtle body that what uh, in the modern spiritual terms we call it as astral body. But in Vedanta we call it very simple as the subtle body that is much more finer, that exists even when this body dissolves. And in meditation and in higher spiritual pursuits, people have come to realize a higher manifestation of their existence, a much more powerful manifestation, which we call the subtle body. This is definitely not the end of the findings, but he says that this idea of jumping beyond the body has been known to man uh, from the ages of the Rig Veda. He says, we read in the hymns of the Rig Veda, addressed to the God of fire, who is burning a dead body. In the Rig Veda, it is written, carry him, O fire, in your arms gently. Give him a perfect body, a bright body. Carry him where the fathers live, where there is no more sorrow, where there is no more death. He says, the same idea you will find present in every religion. He continues, and we get another idea in it. It is a significant fact that all religions without one exception holds that man is a degeneration of what he is, whether they clothe this in mythological words or in the clear language of philosophy or in the beautiful expressions of poetry. Now he takes us to the other idea. The first idea is that religion tells us that there is something beyond this physical body which we can experience and know. So this is the first thing and this was written in the form of poetry, it was written in the form of uh, a story and now he says there is another fact which we can find in all religions. He says that religion in various ways have been trying to tell us that the present state of ours is a degeneration of what we actually are, that we are pure and powerful. And this state of weakness, this state of limitation is actually a fall from that powerful state. He says whether you clothe this in, uh, clothe this in mythological words or in the clear language of philosophy or in beautiful expressions of poetry, this fact has been presented before mankind. This is the one fact, he continues, this is the one fact that comes out of every scripture, of every mythology, that the man that is, is a degeneration of what he was. He says, this is the kernel of truth within the story of Adam's fall in the Jewish scripture. We know this story from the Christian scriptures where God forbids Adam and Eve to eat the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And then the serpent tempts Eve to eat that fruit from the forbidden tree and she shares it with Adam. And they immediately became ashamed and then there was a fall. So here what Swami Vivekananda is trying to say is that every scripture has this one idea presented before man. Now we see in the modern times that such stories are not given much worth because they do not uh, fall in line with logic, they do not make sense and the idea of Genesis from such stories seem to be contradicting the theory of uh, creation from the modern scientific standpoint. But what Swami Vivekananda is trying to say is that you may deny the fact that it is historically and scientifically invalid. But if you are true to the idea of spirituality, you will find that it is trying to speak of a truth. The truth, like he said, is clothed in mythological words or in expressions of poetry. 
and this could be telling a truth what is this truth that our present state is not our best state when we say a present state the body bound state and this is not our only identity if we get connected to this world and identify with this world we will feel limited and when we do feel limited we feel fear and when there is fear there is sin so even the scriptures try to point to us that there is a state which is natural pure and free so this is the idea that swami vivekananda is trying to present that all scriptures have that truth they must have clothed it in many ways but there are truths which we have to take from this religion from religions he says this is again and again repeated in the scriptures of the hindus the dream of a period which they call the age of truth which is the satya yuga he says the hindus understand satya yuga this way he says when no man died unless he wished to die when he could keep his body as long as he liked and his mind was pure and strong there was no evil and no misery and the present age is a corruption of that state of perfection so he says that this idea is there even in the hindu scriptures where we conceive of an age of truth the satya yuga where man couldn't die where he could keep his body as long as he liked and his mind was pure and strong i know it is hard in these times to accept such a possibility and even if it is swami vivekananda has no qualms against it what he says is yes there may be scientifically distorted but in terms of what it has to say about the truth that our eternal state is much more purer and perfect than this has a fact that can be understood if we saw this ideas of mythology from that light now he takes us to the story of the deluge he says that this is found literally in every scripture now here is his version he, he says that story itself is a proof that this present age is held to be a corruption of a former age by every religion it went on becoming more and more corrupt until the deluge swept away a large portion of mankind and again the ascending series began it is going up slowly again to reach once more that early state of purity now he says that this idea of deluge again is speaking of so first he says that there is a fall which uh, is narrated by the story of uh, adam and eve or the story of ideas of the satya yuga that there is this position which man is stuck in in terms of being degenerate and he can raise himself to that level of purity again now now mythology when it had to present this fact that it has to man has to go back to his eternal state how did mythology present this he says they presented this by the story of the deluge so here swami vivekananda says side by side with this we find the story of the deluge everywhere that story itself is a proof that this present age is held to be a corruption of a former age by every religion it went on becoming more and more corrupt until the deluge swept away a large portion of mankind and again the ascending series began how do we understand this so in terms of religion they project this as a particular age which is corrupted and there's going to be another age where it is going to rise whether it is a possibility or whether it's not vedantins or thinkers or spiritual aspirants take this idea of age as not an era but age as a particular state of existence for a particular individual and he believes that what the religion is trying to present as a collective uh, notion that people are going to go into a particular state of deluge and rise the aspirant understands it from the individual sense that there is going to be a kind of phase where he is going to reach the depths of his fall and rise again to a state of his natural glory with this we end today's podcast the two ideas were presented to us from religion standpoint and vivekananda says that 
Even though they're clothed in mythology and poetry, they have a perspective that they place before mankind and this perspective is for man to enquire about and check for its reality. He says that this idea of uh, succeeding or surviving even the body was there from the oldest times of the Rig Veda and in the Rig Veda we hear of hymns and poetries and even in the form of mythology telling us that that there is a life beyond this body that survives this body which is the subtle body it does not take us to the idea of the self it does take us to the idea that we can survive this body and our existence continues even after the fall of this body the second idea he says that this present predicament of ours in which we are extremely unhappy and sad in which we are extremely fearful is a fall from our actual state of eternal existence of being fearless and our eternal existence that is birthless and deathless and man's destiny is to go back to that eternal state of purity these two are the solutions that religion places and swami vivekananda says that this has been placed in religion through various mythologies uh, legends poetry and it is up to us to understand and interpret these ideas so that we can reach a state of fulfillment and solve some of these biggest problems in life. In the next podcast, we will continue the same idea and Swami Vivekananda will be speaking of the deluge a little more in detail and we will try to interpret it and understand it so that we can make sense out of it in our own spiritual journey. Thank you for listening. Thanks.